Alright ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the news desk here on INeedComics.com, part of the Pop Culture Network. Whether you like it or not, I'm your host Dirt. Today we're going to take a look at some of the comics coming out this week. First up, we had Fear Itself 7. <sighs> Excuse me, sorry. Just every time I think about Fear Itself, I just want to fall into a deep coma and go to sleep because there's nothing really going on in this book. Okay. Thor is apparently dead again, I guess. Captain America's shield has a big crack in it. But, I mean, really, beyond that, there's really nothing to this story. There was a bunch of hammers. People broke stuff. Now they're gone, and everybody seems okay. Except Thor, apparently. Again. But, you know, really, the only thing that came out of this series that was kind of cool is Tony Stark made a bunch of weapons and gave them to everybody, and they all turned into the Tron Month characters, if you remember those variant covers from a year ago. So I guess that's kind of cool, because I'm down with anything that's more Tron. But other than that, nothing really seemed to happen in this series. And, of course, it's leading into uh, Fear Itself, The Fearless, that also came out this week. But to be honest, I didn't pick it up, and I'm not planning to. Uncanny X-Men. This is the final issue, if you can believe that. It even says the final issue uh, on the cover. Uh, or does it say the last issue? Was it? Yeah, the final issue right there. Final issue of Uncanny X-Men, and what is it? Well, it's basically Scott saying goodbye to his teammates. Basically him saying it's time to move on, time to not go back to the school because it feels like he's graduated from Xavier's Academy, and he doesn't really feel like he needs to be there anymore. Of course, all of this is being told to us by Mr. Sinister. And I say of course because I haven't been reading Uncanny X-Men a whole lot, just here and there over the past couple years, and so I have no idea why Mr. Sinister is telling us the story of the final day of the Uncanny X-Men before they split up into these two different teams. But hey, there it is. It made for an interesting story. It felt like it actually brought some closure, and it actually felt like now Cyclops is going to go off and do something else that's not X-Men. Of course, we know that in this month comes out the new X-Men number one books that he's a part of, but still, the story uh, felt like it had some nice closure to it, so I'll give it credit for that. All right, next up, we had the Avengers. Now, Avengers this week, apparently because of the events of Fear Itself, which I don't know what those even were, really, uh, but apparently it's too much for the Avengers, and now they have to reform the teams. And uh, uh, Steve Rogers has called everybody to the new Avengers mansion, and uh, everybody is all together there. Uh, the Thing from Fantastic Four, or Future Foundation if you prefer, feels guilty about everything that happened, takes a lot of blame for himself, and Steve says it's time to build new Avengers teams, because apparently when Thor dies, then you have to just rebuild your Avengers teams, I guess. But at least maybe this time they won't have Wolverine, Spider-Man, and Thing in a bunch of different teams at the same time. Now, going from the flagship Marvel group to the flagship DC group, we also had Justice League, number two, finally came out this week. Uh, apparently, it was always slated to be a third week book, uh, but it came out the first book to kick off the whole DC Universe relaunch, but look for it to be embedded in this week from now on, assuming Jim Lee can stay on schedule. Having said all that, I enjoyed the book quite a bit. I like the characterizations here. I think the friendship between Green Lantern and The Flash is just calling out for some sort of mini-series or something. They uh, have already known each other, met each other at this point in Justice League, even though they're just now meeting up with Batman and Superman. We finally saw the events that are going to lead to Cyborg having to be rebuilt as a cyborg. And so uh, there's a lot of neat stuff going on. Still no Aquaman, still no Wonder Woman here in this team yet. But bringing the teams closer together, uh, you know, building the team up to try to stop Darkseid is actually turning out to be a lot of fun. I like this. This story couldn't have happened without the relaunch. So, so far... I gotta say that this is a good read, and this makes the relaunch worthwhile at this point. Okay, Batman also came out this week. Batman is the one with the iffy artwork from Greg Capullo, I guess you pronounce his name. 
Uh, former image guy, did a lot of Spawn stuff. I'm not really sold on his artwork here, but I think the story is intriguing. Someone's trying to kill Bruce Wayne for apparently some sort of uh, history that ties in with Gotham City. It's a great way to kind of play a little bit with Bruce Wayne's history to kind of retell a lot of stuff that's been going on. Maybe we can find out what the deal is with Lucius Fox and Vicky Vale and whatever as we go through all of his history, uh, talking about all these things in the new DC Universe. But one kind of weird thing about it is the story is awfully familiar to what's also happening in Nightwing, which came out this week. Now, hopefully, these stories are mirroring each other because they're going to pay off in some sort of grand scheme connecting the two books together. If not, this is a huge editorial failure on the part of DC. But if they are connected, then this proves to be a great way to have different things happening in the books that will ultimately uh, accumulate into one big story. Now, uh, one thing about Nightwing that is really great is the characterization of Dick Grayson. Uh, he comes across as really a real person, a nice uh, character, someone you care about. And, uh, you know, so overall, I appreciate that. Although, I thought him knocking boots with the chick that he hadn't seen for 20 years in his jet while he's flying to uh, get his circus is one of those things that just, um, there's too much of that in the new DC Universe. Why is it in every Bat book, apparently, we've got people shacking up and having sex? Is this supposed to be the new 90210? Please, let's knock it off for a little while, okay? Let's see here. Moving on, let's talk about Aspen Comics for a little bit. They came out with the new issue of Scourge this week. And for those of you who haven't been following it, this plays out like a big budget, fun Hollywood blockbuster movie. There's basically monsters that are infecting people, taking over all of New York City. And it kind of has a vibe of gremlins to it in the sense that, you know, there are so many of these little things that are, uh, you know, mutating and growing and multiplying and coming after them and it's taking over the whole city and you have this ragtag group of characters who are actually a lot of fun and uh, really help to sell the book and overall i know scourge is one of those things a lot of you guys are going to be like yeah well it's aspen uh, whatever but uh this if you like those big budget type movies if you like going to see transformers you like going to see you know all of the big explosions and the fun characters and, and especially if you are a fan of gremlins then you probably want to check it out. I don't know if this is an intentional nod from them that they're kind of getting that vibe to it or if it's just kind of the nature of creative things. Eventually you're going to have two that uh, intersect that way. But so far this has been a lot of fun and I've really enjoyed it. Finally, we got the uh, Star Trek Legion of Superheroes crossover from DC and IDW. Now I know some of you are thinking, how exactly are they going to cross over? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I'll put it that way. Uh, you've got the Mirror Mirror Universe people. They finally found some way to time travel to go and mess with the time stream. And of course, the Legion of Superheroes are traveling through the time stream in a time sphere. And at the same time, uh, Kirk and Spock and Bones, they get an away team together. Uh, I think Sulu, Chekhov, like pretty much everybody from the bridge is going to go on R&R &R to San Francisco, so they're transporting down to the planet when some sort of thing happens. And uh, you find that the uh, Star Trek characters are now in the Legion of Superheroes world, the Legion of Superheroes people are in the Star Trek world, and somehow the people from the Mirror Mirror universe have infected both worlds and caused changes in the time stream. And I don't know exactly. It's one of those things where I'm sure they are going to explain it a little bit better as, you know, the issues move forward from right now. It's a little confusing, but it's still kind of fun. I mean, it's, it's a neat idea to see Star Trek characters uh, running from the science police, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, there's just some neat concepts going on there. Whether or not they'll pay off in the long run, who knows? But uh, so far, it's kind of a fun start to the series, and we'll just have to see if it can pay off. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today. I think I've talked enough about some comics coming out. But if you have any questions or comments or there's specific comics you want to talk about, just head over to INeedComics.com, part of the Pop Culture Network. Click on the forum link, jump right into the comics discussion, and let us know what you think. Also, if you want to leave any comments, you can always call our 24-hour voicemail line. It's area code 217-953-4025. And, of course, if you want to get a hold of me, you can get a hold of me at dirt at INeedComics.com. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you next time. Dirt, call me. <laughs>